History is littered with stories of nations both succeeding and failing. Some grand empires arising from humble origins would succumb to an awful fate, collapsing into the dustbin of history, often leaving behind only a small crippled rum state, along with fables of their lost greatness. We've covered some of these stories before, those of Hungary, Bulgaria, Lithuania, but today we'll be exploring the opposite, or rather, extensions of those stories. Tiny, insignificant nations that would rise from modest beginnings to great heights, only to fall, yet somehow remain ahead of their original starting position. These are countries that fell and recovered. Before going any further, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank Bulgarian Empire Mapping for animating today's video, and High Peak Mapping for providing the script. And of course, let's first take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Magellan TV, a documentary streaming service that aims to bring you rich and varied history content that you can watch anywhere, ad-free across any device, all the time. With an absolutely expansive library of content that's updated weekly, you'll have no shortage of documentaries on history, science, true crime, and more. In the lead-up to this video, I decided to watch the documentary First Emperor, The Man Who Made China. As we'll explain later on, China's history is littered with rises and falls. One might even call it the perpetual cycle of Chinese civilization, to expand and contract with each era, accumulating more power with each incarnation. First Emperor is definitely a worthwhile watch if you'd like to see a stylized origin story for China as an empire. You can sign up for a one-year membership to Magellan Streaming Service for only $59.88. That's $4.99 per month, and by clicking the link in the description, if you sign up for a one-year membership yourself, you'll get a second-year gift card that you can keep for yourself or give to a friend. Once again, Magellan TV is compatible with Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, Google Play, and iOS, so you can watch any of their many documentaries from virtually any device, whether you're at home or on the go. Now, back to the video. Russia Today, when we think of Russia, we think of the largest nation on Earth, which spans two continents, possesses a formidable military, and maintains influence over more than a dozen other countries. However, that was not always the case. Despite popular belief, the foundations for the Russian nation-state as we know it today lie not with the Slavs, but with the Vikings. The Kievan Rus was founded in the 9th century by Varazhian Vikings seeking to use the rivers of Eastern Europe to reach the wealthy and powerful Byzantine Empire. This new state, inhabited mostly by Slavic and Tatar tribes, revolved around three major cities, the newly founded Novgorod, Smolensk, and Kiev. Unfortunately, the Kievan Rus would not withstand the turmoil of multiple fratricidal wars and the Mongol invasions, leading it to collapse into many Russian principalities who owed a tribute to the Mongol Golden Horde. Through the combined efforts of the principalities in the 4th and 5th centuries, the Golden Horde freed the Russian states from tributary status, the most powerful of which, Muscovy, had grown to control a vast territory. The fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Empire led Moscow to be declared a third Rome and the new center of Orthodox Christianity. The Golden Horde would then shatter, kickstarting Russian expansion eastward. With no natural barriers barring the Ural Mountains, which did not reach to the Caspian Sea, Russia would soon come to control the vast, inhospitable wilderness of Siberia. For centuries, Russian history followed the path of war and expansion, particularly with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Swedes, British, French, Ottomans, Chinese, Japanese, and Germans. And as you might imagine, this took a toll upon the empire. After suffering a catastrophic defeat at the hands of the Central Powers, the Russian Revolution broke out, spurred on by the German-backed return of Vladimir Lenin. The Soviet Union was declared in 1922, inheriting a fractured state. But the Second World War would soon change that, as the Red Army would steamroll through Eastern Europe and take territory as far as Berlin, bringing Russia to its influential height. The Soviet Union was left a superpower opposed by the other superpower of the era, the United States, bringing about the Cold War. For a multitude of reasons, including economic stagnation, rising nationalism among several oppressed populations, and failed military ventures, the USSR collapsed into 15 states, with Russia itself being left as a highly federated republic. Russia, struggling to overcome social turmoil, restricted warm water access, security concerns, and economic woes, rose back to prominence in the 2010s, asserting control over Crimea and eastern separatist regions in Ukraine, seemingly preparing to make itself a top global player once again. Germany A nation which today is renowned for its strong economy, booming industry, and its influence over much of Europe via the European Union, was once a largely dysfunctional conglomeration of various tiny states. In the 1230s, following the Middle Eastern Crusades, a Prussian crusade was launched with the goal of Christianizing the local pagan Baltic people. The crusade was a resounding success, with the state of the Teutonic Order being established across much of the modern Baltic nations and Kaliningrad. It would enter and become a major player in the Germanic conglomerate state that was the Holy Roman Empire. 
This decentralized and dysfunctional empire would be abolished in 1806 by Emperor Francis II to prevent it from falling into the hands of Napoleon, who ultimately reorganized it into the Confederation of the Rhine regardless. Following Napoleon's defeat, Prussia then comprising the lands of Brandenburg, East Prussia, and Pomerania, came to dominate many of the northern Germanic states, with the southern states remaining neutral or loyal to the Habsburgs. Prussia would ultimately defeat Habsburg Austria in a war for control over Germany, bringing about German unification under Prussia. The new German Empire quickly became mainland Europe's greatest economic and military power, however World War I would bring all of that to an end. Its colonies stripped away, East Prussia amputated from the mainland, the monarchy abolished, and its economy crippled by massive debt. And the loss of Germany in the Second World War would only exacerbate these losses, leaving half the country under Soviet control until 1990. Since then, however, German industry and economic might has rebounded, reaching the place of the world's fourth largest economy as well as becoming the centerpiece to a continent-wide political and economic union. China An ancient Chinese proverb states that if things are divided for too long they will ultimately unite, and if things are united for too long they will ultimately divide. This largely mirrors Chinese history, especially the early Chinese dynasties. Definite records begin in 1600 BC with the Shang Dynasty, an agrarian state centered around the Yellow River. Through the changes brought on by many civil wars and new regimes, Chinese civilization reached its influential height during the Tang Dynasty, when China held vast lands in Central Asia with most of East Asia outside of China proper held under tributary status. China became its largest and most powerful during the Qing Dynasty, originally established by the Manchu people which was ultimately overthrown in 1912 and replaced by a republic. Here we enter into a complex mess of civil wars, independence movements, revolutions, and outside invasions up until 1949, when the Chinese Civil War ended in a communist victory and some stability returned through the suppression of opposition and aggressive assimilation of resistant populations. The Cold War delayed global willingness to cooperate with communist China, but over time and through many reforms, China was able to enter the global economy and forum, seeing its power and influence rise dramatically as a result. India India has been ruled by many powers both domestic and foreign in nature. It reached territorial heights under the Islamic Mughal Empire, the Buddhist Maurya Empire, and the Hindu Gupta Empire. The Mauryans were the first of these great empires and made significant gains by conquering territories left vulnerable following the death of Alexander the Great, allowing them to become a trade giant of the time. The Gupta Empire followed later down the line in the 4th century and laid much of the groundwork for modern Hindu-Indian civilization marking what most would consider a golden age for the subcontinent. Next came the Mughal Empire, which laid the groundwork for the culture most prominently seen in the modern countries of Pakistan, Bangladesh, and the Islamic portions of the Indian subcontinent. European competition for control of the subcontinent would begin during the reign of this empire, taking city by city in an effort to dominate the lucrative spice trade. In the end, the British, kick-started by the East India Company, became the next external unifier of the subcontinent, with France and Portugal still holding small territories along the coast. Many conflicts would arise from the departure of the British in 1947, mainly over control of land by the various cultures left behind. Much of India was left in Hindu control, while Pakistan and Bangladesh were left majority Muslim, creating much argument over what belonged to who. Four wars and multiple minor conflicts have been fought between India and Pakistan with mixed results. India's economy has remained mainly agricultural up until the 1990s, when an economic boom was experienced lifting millions out of poverty yet condemning hundreds of millions to low-paid high-labor jobs. India is now the sixth largest global economy but still has a long way to go in several other fields if it hopes to become a first world power. The US of Z thanks you for watching. Support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z, out.